Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Those of you that are here and those of you out there in social media land. Uh, I would like to open up in prayer. Father, we do thank you. We thank you for another day of your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your life, health, and strength. Father, we realize today that without you, we can do nothing. And it's our determination and it was the challenges that we faced, that you are Lord. And in spite of what the world is saying, we know that you're God. We know that it's because of you we woke up this morning. It's because of you we have the breath of life. And so we just want to thank you. We thank you, Lord, that a word that be sent and touch someone today. Someone is standing in the need of your word in this last and evil days. But we're going to stand up and we're going to give you glory today. And so we just thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. First, I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the past and his lovely wife uh, and family and all the Zion saints and friends. We love you today. And I just thank you for an opportunity today to come before you. I have an interesting topic today. You know, when we, when we teach, it's not... It's not something that we can take lightly. We, we, we look for a word from the Lord. We don't want to act on our own, but we are looking for an unction from the Holy Ghost. And so today, I really believe I have one. And so the topic I have today, and I'm going to take it partly from Ephesians, the fourth chapter in the first verse. And it says, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. But it's interesting, uh, the study is going to take place in Jeremiah, the 45th chapter. And it was a particular individual, a scribe, that the Lord from heaven thought to inquire. And so, if you just bear with me for the time that's allowed it to me, hopefully we can encourage someone. And so it starts out in Jeremiah the 45th chapter. And it said, The word that Jeremiah the prophet spake unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, saying, This is the Lord. In his particular, he's saying, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Barak, thou didst say, Woe is me now, for the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sign, and I find no rest. Thus thou shalt say unto him, The Lord says thus, Behold, that which I have built, I will break down. And that which I have planted, I will pluck up even this whole land. And seekest thou great things for thyself? Ah, I'm trying to talk to somebody. I want to repeat that. And seekest thou great things for thyself? Mm. Seek them not. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, said the Lord. But thy life I will give unto thee for prey in all the places whither thou goest. God from heaven has a concern with this scribe, which is a contemporary of Jeremiah. And he, he was tasked with a, a pretty great task. And so if I can just go back and, and, and so we can get a deeper understanding about the task which we, he was tasked with, but God had a concern with him while he was being tasked and him kind of getting beside himself. Sometimes we, 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 when we serve the Lord, there's some grief that goes along with it. But even in the grief, we still have to be determined. 
We have to be genuine in our approach. We, we can't get beside ourselves. And, I, and I'm saying this with a thought in mind because I've seen so many start out teaching and preaching and praising, whatever they were doing for the Lord, but somehow or another, they got sidetracked. And I'll put it that way. I won't say they quit, but they got sidetracked or discouraged for some reason. Discouragement tends to want to rise up when you're doing the work of the Lord. It, it, it's, it's, it's almost inevitable. But I'm here to encourage someone today. Those of you that, that might, it might, you, you, you might say, well, that's me. Well, yeah, it might be you. It might be me. You started out and you remember how, I, I'm just thinking back uh, how, how we used to be back in the days and you've seen so many people in here that were willing workers and and it was just working, and it was a good thing to see with your own eyes. It was, it was. Everybody wanted to teach and preach. I, I think I'd rather be called a, a preacher or a teacher rather than be called some of these other things that I've been called in the past. But you find that people are tend to get discouraged, and so here, uh, maybe he thought the work was a. Uh, uh, he had a reward, a certain type of reward for the task that was before, him. and he really did have a task. And so if I can just kind of remind us before I get deeper into the lesson that I'm trying to bring here about this particular individual, this scribe, and it may be you, it may be some work that you've been doing. And you tend to say, well, I, I ain't getting, you know, maybe you ain't getting the results that you thought you were getting. But then you got to re be reminded the work that we're doing is not for us, not any, not any, uh, uh, accolades that we can receive. We are here as servants of the Lord. Remember, the topic is walking worthy of the vocation. And sometimes it, 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 it can seem to be unbearable. But the work must be done. Uh, he said the, 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 the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. It tells me you, it's, 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 woo, we're up against it, if you will, especially in these last days that we're living in. And I do say last days, because the Bible has declared we are living in it. All you got to do is just look around. Look at the condition. Look at the mindset of the people of God who was once this. You couldn't, you was almost breaking down the doors. I, I could just hear us singing on Friday nights and Tuesday nights. I'm just excited. And I knew it's, it's, it's a lull in the action. But I'm finding as I be looking at these big sports events and everything, it's, they popping. They jumping off. And what about the church? What about those of you who have been putting forth the work? But somehow you, you got sidetracked because something didn't go your way. Lord have mercy. I know I'm trying to speak to somebody. Yeah, I'm here in the church and just a couple of us in here. And I, I, I inquired, when are we going to get back? Uh, I, you know, there's a scripture that always hunts me. I ain't going to say hunts me, but it's, it, it don't hunt me. It always is it's, 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 it's getting at me, it's nagging at me. It's, it's always uh, uh, on my mind. It says forsake not. not the assemblies of yourselves. That means we need to be in the I'm talking to you out there. Somebody that says, well, I done got comfortable. But don't get comfortable with this thing. You need to be comfortable with the word of God. Because I'm telling you, there's an enemy against the good work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to discourage the saints. He's trying to get you bogged down. He's making excuses for why I do what I do. I don't need to do it. They don't. Well, well, this is the work of the Lord. Now, I want to I I encourage you because my God took in this 66 books, and he had such a great concern with this particular individual, this scribe named Rock, and his meaning of his name is blessed. But he took the time in this 45th chapter to point out something to him. God had to admonish him. And when God admonished you, it's for a reason. He seen that, hey, you were getting off track. He told him, man, oh, man, what are you talking about? This work, I can take all this out at any given time. This work ain't about you. 
When do you ever think that you deserve anything from God? He said, who is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou should even visit him? We ought to be thankful that God had called us to do. But we understand this flesh and the work that we do sometimes because folks are not always invited. And I can tell you, I, I, I kind of put myself in his shoes. I, I, I looked at the particular verse. Well, what was the task that he had that caused him? You remember now, this is the contemporary of Jeremiah. And if you go back to Jeremiah, the 20 chapters, oh, Jeremiah, let me, let me read a little bit. He said, oh, in the 20th chapter of Jeremiah, here's Jeremiah, he had his bow. He said, oh, Lord, thou hast deceived me and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and has prevailed. And I am in derision daily. Everyone mocked me. He had a work to do. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord made me a reproach unto me and derision daily. The word to do something, it'll separate you. It'll separate you. And folks don't want to, you know, even today, I, I try to casually shoot my shot. People casually shoot you back. They don't want to hear it. <laughs> People have their own righteousness. I, I, I deal with this on a daily basis. You know, and, 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 and you know, I, I, cause you, you talk to people and you see where they're at, and I, you know, I'm trying to see where you're at, cause I'm looking for an opportunity. But people don't really want to get down like that no more. And I'm talking about those once that was once enlightened. Lord have mercy. They don't even want to. I, it, what? Well, if it was good for you back then, it was working for a while. For some reason, you done got caught up. But we need to be mindful. You, the, the, the only hope that you have is that the Lord speak to you like he spoke to this individual here. He said, but, but, but Jeremiah said, then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But, oh, listen at this. But, if y'all ever want to see some strength, some power, he said, but his word was in my heart. You see, it's something that I, even though we go through our little rigmaroles of life and our ups and downs and our challenges, sometimes we don't want to go where we should go. And look, we all, that's just all a part of our emotion. That's all a part of the, who we are, our nature. But God knows your shortcomings. He's seen you where you was at and he still wants to speak to you. I can use you still. I made you worthy. I cleaned you. Nobody else. Oh, uh, but he said it was something when you get it on the inside. Lord. Oh, Lord have mercy. Sometimes we want to hack it up. I, hey, look, I'm going to tell you, I'm flesh. <laughs> but Lord have mercy. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so when these things rise up in me, he said, but his word was in my heart. As a burning fire, mm, shut up in my bone. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. You see, this thing gets on the inside now. Jeremiah had his mouth. But I want to tell you something about this young man. He was, he was, he was tasked with some, some, something that he probably wasn't quite ready for. Now, the scribe, let me tell you a little bit about these scribes. The scribes in that day, they were in high regard, mainly because the word had to come through them. Because a lot of people were illiterate and they could not read. So if you were tasked and you had the label of being a scribe, people looked at you some type of way because you can read. So they were dependent. They didn't know. They didn't know what was happening. Not only they 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 they, 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 they could they were they were standing in the gap. For, for the illiterate people. So, so somebody comes smart, yeah, I'm going to listen. And that's who they were. So they were held in high regard. So it was a lie on them. But 
this scribe, the particular scribe, not only was he a scribe, he had to write down, but God had called him not only just to write, but he had to go carry it out. Mm -hmm. Let me read a little bit. In the 36th chapter, I'm trying to bring it, I'm trying to, I'm trying to encourage people that are serving the Lord in whatever capacity. It may not be a scribe, it could be a doorkeeper. Sometimes people get, I'm tired of holding this door. Your arms can get tired, yeah. but you're holding the door for a purpose. You gotta remember why you're holding that door. You're holding it for God and his people. You never know who's gonna walk through that door. It's whatever capacity. If you're preaching, if you're teaching, if you're cooking, cleaning, it don't matter. You cannot get discouraged. We are all helpers one to another. We cannot give up. You know, they say, it's a saying, they say, they say, Evil men triumph while good men do nothing. So if we are saying that we have the love of God and the love of and yet we are fading, it's hard to get us to do anything. <laughs> but I remember when we used to shout. I remember in this particular church how we used to shout and the church was going on. I didn't even think about a party. Because I, I already knew it was going to be a Holy Ghost party jumping off right here. Where I wanted to be. It just did something to my I couldn't wait. Come on, kids, let's go. We got to get to church. And you come in, the music playing, people's jumping and shouting. But now, I'm just being honest, this is the teacher talking. I don't hear much of that anymore. And it concerns me. It concerns me. Uh, I, I, I remember we had people in place taking care of the young people, teaching and, and doing, we don't, we don't see much of that anymore. You can't just lie on the preacher and the pastor. That it's what about us? There's, there's gifts and callings out there. There's much work to be done. We can't, we can't become complacent now. I don't know if you look at world news, but I watch a lot of world news. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Woo! And I, I, I think I want to be up under the shadow of the Almighty who can cover me from that. Or even if the storm comes, we will cover it. Be with me in the storm. You may not take me out, but Lord, I know you're with me. So therefore, I have a hope. That's all I'm talking about. I'm just trying to encourage somebody. Some, maybe, maybe your little strength is gone, and maybe you need to do a few more push-ups and some sit-ups and get your strength back. You know, take baby steps, but we need to step back into this place. Because if he said, forsake not just assembling yourself, how is it that we can let uh, 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 any uh, uh, pandemic or any epidemic or whatever they want to call it, stop us from doing what God said? Uh, he's, didn't he say he'll protect us? That's what he, said. he is our provider. Mm -hmm. He is our way maker. He is the giver of life. We said through him we live and move and have our being. Let me get to this word. And it came to pass, and I'm in 36. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book. And write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all nations Woo. from the day I spake unto you unto thee from the days of Judah even this day. Y'all, the Lord is speaking. It may be, listen, this scroll, this letter, it had a purpose. Listen what he had to do. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose unto do, un, to do unto them that they may return every man from his evil way that I may forgive their enemies. And their sin. You know, we don't talk about the wrath of God. Mm -mm. And I'm going to tell you, we talk about his love and people are getting fooled by that. 
And they think we can just come in. See, with look, the praises and all the things that we do, look, if you ain't in, uh, uh, if you ain't being obedient, your praise is hitting the wall. You better preach that. <laughs> this thing ain't for everybody. And people can come in and, and they can do what they do and think they come in and get all emotional if you want to. Lord Jesus. But oh, if you ain't situated in your problem, mm -hmm. you you just, hey, look, hey, you just dancing. You might as well get back to the club. Exactly. You just dancing. God is looking for some obedience. It don't matter what you do, what you say, how well you speak, whatever your mind says. They say, they say, Every man is proclaiming his own goodness. Mm -hmm. And people want to tell you about how they're going to be saved. Yeah, yeah. Instead of what the Bible said. How I'm going to be saved. Well, I don't take, you don't need to be a church. Okay. Well, I can see that. And so I don't believe that. I'll let you talk. You know, the Bible tells you you can't cast a pearl before the swine. So once a person has their mind made up. Now, if you really want to know, my son, my oldest son, after dad, I need to know some stuff. Well, I'm willing to help you. If you're willing to listen, that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. But but there was a letter going out and say, so I'm going back to the fourth verse. He said, now then Jeremiah called Barak, the son of Neriah, and Barak wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he has spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. This is where the task. It gets far greater than, than beyond Barack's uh, uh, scope of work. <laughs> Woo. Then, and, and Jeremiah commanded Barack, saying, I am shut up, and I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore, go thou and read in the road what thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all of Judah that come out of their cities. It may be that they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return everyone from his evil for great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against this people. Ah, you see, now, not only did he have to write, but because of the situation that Jeremiah was in, being locked up in jail, he said, I can't go now. Mm, you got to be ready. Yeah. See, you never know what, you may not be here to preach a word. Somebody got to be ready. Someone. Why, after all these years, you ain't picked up on something? Mm. Do you know you got to have a word ready? ready. Be ready in the end season and out of season. Out of season. A ready word. You got to be ready. And so, huh, he, he, he knew his job. He, well, my job is to write down. But now, you got to go among the officials. You got to go among the people. Because, bro, hey, look, you never know. Your position, could, where it could be leading you to. See, somebody say, well, I ain't going to be second fiddle. What's wrong with second fiddle? I, man, I want to be any fiddle if I can get in the house of the Lord. It don't matter. I ain't, I ain't look, see, but that's this, that's just his old flesh. Want to be rewarded for something. You just ought to be glad just to be in the house. Huh? huh? I'm glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But you never know why you're going in. See, you just don't come in here. It's wisdom up in here. And the Bible says all you're getting, what? Get what? Get, get, understanding. get an understanding. Get wisdom. Huh? It's the principal thing. So when you come here and you're listening, see, it, God has a purpose. He's working a work in us. So you never know when your calling has come. So the topic, like I said, well, to be walk worthy, to be prepared. You just never know. But he wasn't ready. So he had to go. 
And so he had to face these people that, that, that wasn't quite accepting of him. And some of us, we got a word. Look, if you really get out, people going to, they, people think we just a joke. Mm -hmm. And they think they know the Lord better than you. Yes, they do. Yeah. But I don't need to get up. I, I'm sorry, those of you laying in your bed. Don't think you got to get up and come into the house of the Lord. <laughs> but uh, listen, just so you know, where is that scripture? Where is that in, 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 in Hebrews? Let me go there real quick. I, I didn't say it. The Lord said it. So if you want some, I'm talking to you. Some of us, you, you got to get up out of that bed. Where is that at? I know it's, I know it's in there. It's just, whew. Where's that scripture at? Um, help me out, y'all. Which one for forsake? not to assemble yourselves. I know it's in, in Hebrews. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous and a little excited, but I know it's in there because I just read it. 1025. 10. What you say? 1025? Yeah. Right in my face. Listen. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is. But exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Listen, you must be aware of your surroundings, the time that we're in. The day is vastly approaching. This is the purpose. This, this scroll was to warn the people about the wrath. And so he, he said, well, 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 I can just I can just see a man, man, look, bro. Now you're tasking me. I had to write it. And then when he went, man, not only that, but them people was giving it to him. Because, you know, everybody said, man, don't come telling me about what, man, we're comfortable with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. What he's telling them, the Lord is calling each and one, every one of us today to repent. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about those of you who have put your hand to the plow. He said, once you put your hand to the plow and look back, you ain't what? You ain't, fit for you ain't fit for the kingdom. I'm talking to some, some of you old workers. Some of you retired. Well, you don't retire in the Lord. You work until he retires you because God has a purpose for his people. And he took the time out of these 66 books to point out something to a particular individual, a, a soldier. Look, you done got beside yourself. Now you think you got something coming. But I called you. You didn't call me. Man, I will destroy everything. Lord Jesus. I, I, I'm God, dude. <laughs> he just tried to, he tried to break it down, bro. Look, man, look, look. Now, we know that God said he is a rewarder of those who diligently. That's what he said. Yeah. It's in the book. I got another one. This, this encouraging about this God that we say. He took the time to point out to Barak. Look, bro. Uh -uh. So we got to take the time out. And he said, when we not only when we assemble ourselves, we exhort one another. Exactly. We remind one another mm -hmm. that there's a task that's before us. We got to preach to the people. We can't beat the people. We got to preach them. We got to compel them in the best way we can. We go forth. And hey, everybody, everybody, some you're gonna run across some stone faces. I remember one time we were out when we were, uh, what we call it when we go out? Uh, in the witnessing. witnessing. And I, <laughs> I was down on Dale Paso by the, by the little restaurant over there where everybody used to go. Man, that dude told me, get the blank blank out of his face. But everybody ain't gonna be receptive. And just like these individuals, they weren't receptive. And so he, he began to complain, oh, is me. Not only that he, he told the people about themselves, and it's something when you tell people about themselves, you kind of step on their toes and put them in, and you know, because the word is that it'll cut you. It's it just what it is. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts, and it cuts deep. Mm -hmm. And it calls people. Well, who was that? Uh, uh, John the Baptist talking man, you can't be with your brother's wife. It cuts deep sometimes. 
And he went and he had to tell the people about themselves. And these people thought we had it going on. Matter of fact, they had some, they got some false scribes and some false prophets that was setting them up and making them think that they was all cool. But he broke, he broke it down. But it cost him something. Do you know when you serve the Lord, it's costly. This is not a frivolous work. And maybe, though it be tasking sometimes, but 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 I, I, I'm going to encourage you before you, you, you decide to give up. Because, you know, as a human, we know uh, what, you know, our, our capacity. Sometimes we, everybody only has a certain measure of faith. Mm. But then that's the reason why we have to continue to study the Word of God. Because sometimes things come up on us. It comes up on us, and we, we have some challenges. And I'm trying to talk to someone that's been challenged in this way, someone that's got discouraged, someone has just lost their way, someone that was on fire for the Lord, but now you find out that there's, there's just smoke, and ain't even no... I'm saying this, and I can't, you know, see, the one thing I'm not going to do is point fingers. Because I, I, I've been through the, the valley. But, 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 but I held on. You see, I, I had little to hold on to, but this is a little bit of Jesus more than the world could ever offer. There you go. If you can just hold on to a little bit of Jesus, that's all. That's all I need. Just a little bit. And I held, I had to hold on. This is personal, but yet I see it happening throughout. And I, and I see the people of God, some, not all, because there are some true faithful ones, but some, we, we've gotten complacent. And there's some great teachers I, I, I've seen, and I don't see them teaching anymore, or even talking about it anymore. I, I, I used to talk to certain people that love the scripture, now they don't even want to talk about it anymore. Lord Jesus. And that bothers me. There's certain ones I used to, man, and there's almost one to say, hey, man, I, I really don't want to hear that. And it makes me feel like I'm trying to dump on, but, but I remember the conversations we used to have. But I've seen it, and it concerns me. And we have to be concerned for one another. We have to be concerned about the work of the Lord. This is a vocation. You see, see when you come to Christ, he, he didn't call you to, 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 to bench more. This is not a bench more thing. How, God can use you, and he can use you mightily. He used the scribe. One, all he had to do was just write before. Now he got to go and speak. He got to stand in the gap for his brother that's locked up, for his contemporary. He know, he, he was there when Jeremiah said his, his spies shut up in the bone. He was there, he was a contemporary. And there was a, a lot of other false scribes that I began to look and do some research. There was a lot of false scribes, even in the, one, the same people that he had to go and tell. So they didn't want to hear it, and it got to the point he had to go to it, and he had to even go and hide it. And then, you got to remember, that, that that even though the scroll that he had wrote, man, the king tore it up, burned it up. So he had to go write it again. And you talking about woe with me. The Lord reached from heaven. Say, wait a minute, son. Be careful. Be careful, son. I'm doing this. I'm the one who got this. You can burn up with them. I'm the one who got your life in my hand. Don't get beside yourself. And I'm just telling us, don't, we, we don't want to let the, the Lord's wrath come upon us because of our own complacency, our own ideas about stuff, our own way. Because we, we, we know that it's wrote twice in the, in the Proverbs 14 and 16. There's a way that seemeth right. That's right. Under man. But the end thereof is the ways of death. You don't want to come to Christ and, and be enlightened and then return back I wonder, do anybody in here, I'm talking to you, do you like vomit? Because that's what he's saying. That's what he said. You, so when you come to Christ and you've been serving and you've been teaching and preaching and, and doing whatever you were doing, and then you quit. Or you didn't say, well, I, I got a different approach. Basically what you're doing, you're sucking up vomit. Mm -hmm. And I hate to put it like that, but if we're going to be real, let's just be real. I'm trying to encourage someone that 
We need to get this fire burning. God is a consuming fire. He never goes out. So if I'm in Christ and he's in me, then I, I, this is why I, I, I just wanted to point this particular. He had a task. And some of us are being taxed. And maybe it seems the task is overbearing. Maybe you, you seem like you're not getting the results that you're looking for. But I, I just want to encourage you here in, 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 in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, at the 10th verse. I, I love to encourage you. Though we have to be admonished sometimes, but, but God has an encouraging word for us. Amen. And he said this, he said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, and have ministered to the saints, and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to full assurance of the hope unto the end. Lord have mercy. We got a word that's before us. We got to continue to work. We cannot give up on this word. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot give up. And no, it may be tears, it, 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 but we have to be determined in spite of the challenges. And we do have them. Gotta it's challenging. I have to speak to people in my family and they got their own ideas and it's tough. Well, and, and they, they, some of them, you know, I can't compete with the intelligence of some of them. <laughs> well, I ain't, that's why they got, you know, some of them just will be on my, you know. <laughs> but they, they're so determined. How is it that we can get away? I, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, when we, we were so humble, when we used to just fall down and pray, now we just get up and run. <laughs> what, what has changed? What's in the atmosphere? Now, I'm not talking about the world. The world needs to come in. But I'm talking about those of you that's been in and going back into the world. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what we're doing. Lord Jesus. You see? And if we, we got to be careful on how we Carry ourselves and what you're saying, because whether you understand it or not, those of you that's once been enlightened, I, I like to use that word because that's out of what is that out of uh, Psalms 34? It, it's just something you know, enlightened. <laughs> it does something when you're enlightened, illuminated. Yes, yes, it, 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 you know, you, you just it just yeah, you, you become bubbly. You, you, you know, I, I, I'm glad when I come into the house of the Lord. And I come in, you know, uh, emotions not intact, but I came anyway. Because I know what my help is. Yeah. Because I know sometimes you can get so emotionally distraught. You don't know. Family, loved ones, friends, they can, they can cause it. Look, we are just human. The Bible said we are all sheep and I'm going astray. But I, I, I wanted to come in because I know where the shepherd is. He's in the house. And so no matter what my head is and what I'm thinking, and Lord forgive me if I ever uh, 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 made anyone feel some type of way, I struggled, but I came. I didn't give up and I didn't give in to that man. Sometimes I, I, well, I live, but don't, don't laugh, don't y'all, because I'm living. <laughs> I'm living, yeah, but when I'm talking about live, I, I, I live, I, I'm, my head went on straight. Now I'm living because of physical uh, <laughs> disability, but I'm still live. Uh, hey, who was that, Jacob, he lived? How y'all know? Jacob probably just lived. Lord, I'm in. But once he get in, I think he got so happy he forgot he had a limb. <laughs> Ain't that the way it is? Amen. When you come to Christ? <laughs> but I, I'm just trying to speak to someone, and this is in all seriousness. You may be discouraged. Jeremiah got discouraged. Moses got discouraged. Mm -hmm. He said, speak. What did Moses do? Boy, people can cause you to distract them. Right? Boy, I think Moses was like, I'm, boy. <laughs> <coughs> But he said, speak. 
See, we can all even, what was that, Habakkuk? What did he say? <laughs> Lord, why is these people prospering over us? But he told them to write the vision. Make it plain. And make it plain. See, we all get discouraged sometimes. And it sometimes it just don't make sense in the work that we're doing. But you got to keep moving forward. Ain't no looking back. Looking back, you ain't fit for the kingdom. That's what it said. And what he mean by looking back, looking back into that old stuff that you left behind. The stuff that, the reason why you came in the first place. That's what I'm talking about, looking back. We can look back and say, look where it bought me from. But I'm talking about looking back it means actually getting caught up in that stuff that you, how is it that if it wasn't good and it bought you in in the first, if something just don't, I, I, I ain't the smartest cat. But if it, didn't, if it didn't do you no good and you came up into the house of the Lord and the Lord delivered you and then you, you get upset and mad with the world, now you want to, well, I was cool. What? I, I, you know, that's just like, you know, I don't know, I've been around that hard. And it's good to see alcoholics get delivered. Mm -hmm. But you know, they say once an alcoholic is always an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And once he goes back, what did it say? You swept and clean in them yeah. seven? Yep. They come in and this, 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 I, and I've seen it happen. I've seen a brother, he, he stopped drinking for a long time, man. He had the shakes, man. He'd get up in the morning. He, he was just bouncing around. I'm like, no. He just made you, you, make you think you're walking in an earthquake. He shook so bad. And he got off of it. And he stopped shaking. But stress and everything else. Next thing you know. This is what I'm talking about. But this is much more serious. Your life. Is in peril when you come up against the God and his wrath. That's what his, this letter was to warn them. You don't want none of this. You know how they say, you ever see somebody, boy, you, you don't want these things up on you, boy. You better go on and leave me alone. Some folks don't believe until they get hit. Then they find out, but then you done got hit and you knocked out. It's too late. Too late. Five wide and five on one. It's too late. God is warning us. He's warning us in his word. You know, I had I had a lesson. I said, Lord, I wanted to, to teach on this lesson, and it was in, you know, uh, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, fourth chapter, and then uh, 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 1 Peter, the, the third chapter. But, you know, God got a way that you could incorporate his word because the truth is said in the Old Testament and in the New. And the truth is, so we know that these are last days. Yes, sir. These are perilous times. Perilous times. He told us about people, you know, uh, lovers of their own selves. More than love. How can you love yourself more than you love God? When he created you, how can you get so caught up? But we know how. But is this, when you just start, you know, now, I, like, I wasn't no mathematician, but simple addition can help some people out. It just don't make sense. Now, I created you, and I created you for a purpose, but God gave us our own will. And you can choose. He said, choose you this day. Mm, you're going to serve. And now I think, who was that? Elijah said, if God be God, was that him? Serve him. Serve him. If Baal be God, sir, I think people are making their own choices. But those of you, we cannot water down this word. You know what the word is saying. So if you're getting caught up, if you're putting that bottle or that thing back in your mouth, you already know what you're doing. Many gonna come in that last day. Lord, did not. Lord, did not. He's gonna say, depart. But he's trying to warn us just like he, he, he sends a warning here. He's warning him. Just like he did in Revelation, thou hast left thy first love. Mm -hmm. Now he committed him in the church on the good days, but he told him, look, some way you done got, you done got maybe a little callous on maybe a little complacent. You know, maybe you thought you was a little better. Maybe you thinking like Barack here. 
that you got something coming. But he said, remember from where thou hast fallen. Now, God is saying you have opportunity to get it on back. That's grace. Grace is allowing us an opportunity to get it back right. What do you say? Good man fall how many times? Seven. But he can get back up. Get back this up. is grace, though. God is allowing us to get back up. He's given that opportunity for us to get back up. And that's what this, this is a, a particular message to, to someone that might be struggling in this area. Because I see it, it it's been pricking my heart for the, about the last month. And I thank God for an opportunity because I, I, I wanted to know how can I get this out? You know, I, I, this is my opportunity here to share it. It's, it's in the word. And so as I was, I was I'm going through Jeremiah and I just looked, I said, wow, this big old book, the book of life, when he took out 45th chapter in five verses, to point out to one individual, wow, out of all the people in the world, and I'm telling you that the work that you're doing for the Lord, he will reward you. Yes. That's what he said. Okay. And you know God has no respect to prayer. But this word is speaking to you. See, the word of God, I look at it as, a, as principles now. These are principles that we got. Not just a word or pointing to this a certain individual, but it's a principle. He's, he's saying that to you. Not only is he saying it to Barak, but he's saying it to you. That's how important you are to him. God can count the hairs on your head. Got a number. You see, so that tells me how particular God is and how concerned he is with his people that are doing a great work. And he's saying to us, do not stop. Do not let do not get distracted. Don't let your emotional wherewithal and all of you. Some people, you know, they people <laughs> they got their own uh, ideas about stuff, their own theology about stuff. I don't know how you can gather some stuff and try to distort the word of God. It is what it is. It's written in stone. God say, I'm the same yesterday and today and forevermore. I <laughs> teach you. Not bad teach. There you go. Hmm? Teach it. So how is it that we want to try to distort this thing to see we, we're trying to make the word fit our lifestyle. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it doesn't work like that. We got to fit into what God has already commanded us to do. We cannot get around it. We cannot dance around it. Don't think your little issues because they are little when it comes to this big God. And, and you just need to cry out. See, we make them big because we want it to be our issues and we want to just love our issues more than love and God. That's what he's saying right here. Mm. We covered up, you know, politics is dividing people. Even in the church. In the church. Well, that's, that's where, when I say divide people, I'm really, the world is going to do what it's going to do. But I'm talking about in the house. Everything I'm talking about is people in the house. This word is for people in the house. Those that were once enlightened, once again, I just I know I'm repetitive with that, but I'm just trying to talk to them. I don't want us to fall away. I want us to keep serving. I want us to keep that fire going. I, man, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking back a little bit, and I'm looking back because I can just, I used to think how we used to come in this, in them, in them doors, and, and you just see the music, and people just what are them people at? They the piano, they the organ, they the drum, they just beating loud, folks are jumping. Where are they? Where are you? You were serving the Lord. It was really going down, as they say. Stop it, huh? Mm -hmm. I just got to, you know, we got to, we got to call people out today because the wrath of God is coming up on those that have turned away from Him. Lord Jesus. Oh, and I'm just trying to tell y'all, y'all remember how y'all used to dance and jump and shout. I'm talking to you, you praise dancers, you, uh, uh, what they call them on the, on the, on the praise team. Y'all know who, who used to be on the praise team and no longer praising them on the team? <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Y'all know? Sometimes, see, you, you might say, who do this man think he is? 
But I'm kind of like the scribe here. You got to go up against it sometimes. Because the ultimate is, is that God is trying to bring us into the fold. You can't come up in here with a false praise. Mm. You can't do it. Bounce it off the wall. Mm. It, it, it just ain't gonna happen. God knows that. See, because he looked at he looked at this particular individual. He said, wait a minute, bro. I'm, I know your motives. Right now they ain't good. I need you to get it back on track. Ain't that like the father talking to his son, yeah. his daughter? You need to get this thing back right. You, you maybe you think you got to go. Maybe you think you got a little smart. And there's a lot of smart people and a lot smarter than I am. But I'm just oh nobody trying to tell somebody about the one who can save anybody. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. I'm just a simple old man that loves the word of God. He made it simple enough for me to understand. So. Those of you with all the brain power, you need to get with God. You need to come back home. Like I say, you remember, you were one of the ones I used to look at. Oh, they sure know. They, they, they on that praise team. They on that organ. They on that piano. They on them drums. They beating them. They singing off the top of their lungs. I know you. And I remember you. You know. I'm talking to somebody. Come back. You better come back because the scroll, even though they tore it up, how is it that you think you can tell what God is trying to do? Mm. Now that was crazy for that king. This is the king. He, the one that was large and in charge, he tore it up. But you know what God did? All right. Not only, I'm gonna add what I, I'm gonna give you what I gave you already, and I'm gonna add a little more to it. Mm -hmm. Since you want to play swine. Yeah. You see, you don't want to play. It's, 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 you don't want to fall into the hand of an angry God. That's what we're saying in essence. We just try to bring you back into the fold. Whatever caused you to leave and, and not perform like you were performing, not being worthy, or caused you to just be distracted, caused you the fire that you had, it didn't, it, it didn't have nothing to do with people. If you were doing it for the people, then you probably didn't. Maybe you was just dancing. I don't know. Maybe you was just showing out. But if you were for real, if you was for real, I don't know if I'm looking at y'all. I don't know who I'm looking at. But if you was for real about it, you need to come back. Because there's too much silence in the church. We need that noise. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hmm? We need some noise up in here. Noisy people. Make a joyful noise. We need to jump and shout and cry out. I remember I seen people with tears and snot and everything else. Lord forgive me. They were jumping around, losing themselves in the Lord. Now, it's just too quiet for me. And you know, I ain't gonna lie. If it get too quiet for me, I wanna be honest. I'll fall asleep. Oh, I'll be sitting around there, swimming around. I, it's hard. If you see me, it's because it ain't, it ain't enough noise for me. And I need to be in that. Matter of fact, there are people that were so gifted in that, that because I'm not the one I can't sing, but they just make me want to sing anyway. I'm like, I can do that. Because you can catch in, because they sing so good, and they don't care how, if you ain't singing that great, you can catch up with them. But don't nobody know. Because we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about walking worthy of the vocation. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about heaven is hearing us down here singing and dancing and praising to the Lord. But we allow the world and things. The enemy is always working. He wants your praise. He don't want you to give God praise. But God has given us a choice. You make the choice. But God wants a, He wants your genuineness. Your pure mind. He wants the essence of you. You cannot come at our God any kind of way. The false praise ain't going to get it. 
We struggled, we all struggled. There was not a person that came in the house of the Lord didn't have a struggle, didn't have an issue. But we hid. You know that's what counted. He never told us it was going to be easy. And if you read and you continue to read the prophets, they ran into it and, 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 and the apostles, they, had, they were up against it. But they had that one hope. <laughs> that one hope. And see, and that's what we, we need to get back to. The world here it says, and I, I'm, I'm just going to leave you with it. How much time? Oh, I got five minutes. I got to leave you with it. And it's so similar. Uh, Second Peter, the third chapter, is so similar to Second Timothy, uh, uh, the third chapter. They, it's so the similarities. What is truth in it? And I just want to read a little bit, and then I'm gonna just let this thing go. Uh, at the third chapter, at the first verse, he said, "This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir." Up your, not just any old mind, your pure mind. The very essence of who you are. The way God made you. By the way of remembrance. <clears throat> that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles. Some people say apostles. Look, now you want to hear apostles, he, he tried to tell you, I was right there with him. From us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? I think that's where people lose it, right there. Right there. Where is the promise of his coming? I've been working so long. I've been putting in the work, and I ain't getting the results. My patience is running out. And what happened? Well, I don't need, I can't do it no more. They done got on my last nerve. Well, do you, you better be thankful that you got a nerve. Because mm -hmm. you could be numb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Where is his promise? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's, that's a trap. That's what people are getting caught up in. Because they think they got time. We're going to kick it again. We're going to go back and kick it. What? Lord have mercy. Be careful. For this they willingly are ignorant. Listen at this now. For this they are willingly ignorant. Mm. Lord have mercy. Willingly. You choose to be ignorant. Mm. Turn, mm -hmm. turn. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant. He's trying to warn you. He's telling you of this one thing. That the day, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but all should come to but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away from away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt and fervent with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then, got one minute. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all and all in all holy conversation and God? Looking for the hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall 
Mary with the prayer meeting. I'm gonna stop right there. Walk worthy of the vocation where we are. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>